in our previous session, we looked at centrifugal pumps. We looked at the construction, the workings, and the general principle that's associated with them. We looked at how the continuity equation impacts the velocity and how this in turn causes the rise in the pressure within the centrifugal pump. Now we're going to look at a number of questions. And it states that during a laboratory test on a centrifugal pump, water at 20 degrees is pumped from its sump to its reservoir. The flow rate of the water is given. It's given as 15 meters cubed per hour. And it tells us the torque that is applied to the pump shaft was measured to be 6.4 Newton meters. It also has a number of other measurements that are tabulated in a table and it tells us to assume that the pump operates at 3000 revs per minute. We're asked to construct a detailed diagram and label the components in such a system. We're asked to identify any key assumptions that we can use or we can make when we're doing this problem. It also asks us if the pump and electric motor efficiencies are 75 and 85% respectively. We're to determine the gauge pressure at the outlet and the electric power that's required. So to begin with, we're going to look at what is involved in the system. Now we're not going to go into any great detail here. If you recall in our previous session, we looked at this and we identified that we have the impeller, we have the casing, we have the suction section, and we have the delivery section. We talked through each of these and this is exactly what you're being asked to do in this problem. So we're going to move straight on into the problem itself. So the assumptions that we can make is that the flow is going to be steady and there's going to be irreversible losses that can be neglected. We're going to look at the governing equations and the governing equations that we're going to identify in this case, there's three of them. The first one is the work that is required to generate the head and that's given by the formula, the density times the volumetric flow rate times the gravity times the pump head. The pump head we need to actually look at as well and the pump head is established as what's happening at the discharge side minus what's happening at the suction side and in this case we've got the pressure element, we've got the kinetic element and we've the potential element at each side of the pump. Finally the efficiency of the pump is given as the work required to generate the head divided by the work that the motor must do. We're also given a number of values in the question that we can use here. We're told the density of the fluid. We actually weren't told the density of the fluid, but we're assuming that it's operating around 24 degrees Celsius. And when we refer to the relevant tables, we can find that the density of the fluid is going to be 998 kilograms per meter cubed. We've got the, uh, the, the, the speed, the rotational speed of the pump, which is 3000 revs per minute. We've got the pump efficiency. We've got the motor efficiency. We've got the torque that's applied to the impeller. We've got the inlet pressure. We've got the difference in elevations between the inlet and the outlet. And we've got the velocities at the inlet and the outlet. So before we actually go into this problem, we're just going to look at this, this uh, part of the question here. And we're just going to say that this part here is to do with the discharge side. So we're going to denote that with a two. And this side here, is to do with the suction side or the inlet side and we're going to donate that as a one. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to be able to rewrite it as P2 over rho g plus u2 squared over 2g plus a z2 minus P1 over rho g plus u1 squared over 2g plus Z1. And, and that becomes the equation that we're going to be using for this problem. We're going to ne need to manipulate that so we can get it in terms of whatever we require. So we're going to be asked for what is the pressure, what is uh, P2. So we're going to be making this equation, so we're going to manipulate it, so we're going to isolate P2. That means we're going to need to find what is the head that's developed in this pump. And we're going to look at trying to find that by using this equation for the efficiency or this equation here for the, the work that's required in establishing the head. So moving on to our next slide, we can say that the efficiency of the pump is given by 
the density multiplied by the volumetric flow rate, multiplied by the gravity, multiplied by the pump head, all divided by the angular uh, motion of the shaft times the torque. So if we were to look at what's going on here, we're going to take, we're going to need to isolate for HP or for the head in the pump, we're going to need to isolate this. And the way we're going to isolate that is we're going to multiply across the omega t and we're going to divide across on both sides the other. And that's going to leave us with this equation down here. And when we do that, we're able to substitute in the values that we were given in our problem. We were told it was 3000 revs per minute, so we're going to convert that using 2 pi over 60. We know the torque was 6.4 and we know the efficiency of the pump was 75%. We know the density of the fluid is 998 kilograms per meter cubed. We're able to convert the volumetric flow rate from um, meters cubed per hour into meters cubed per second and we know gravity is 9.81 meters per second and when we do all that we're able to determine that our head that is developed in this pump is approximately 37 meters. So also from the governing equation we're going to take the equation as we had earlier and we're going to manipulate it and when we take that equation and manipulate it like I explained in the previous slide we're going to isolate it for P2. We wanted to get P2. So once we actually do that, we're able to then substitute our values back into this equation again, and we're able to determine that the pressure at the exit of this pump is approximately 361 kilopascals. So the next thing we need to do is we need to solve for the electric power that is required to develop the head. So the head, the work, or the electric power that we require is going to be given in watts or kilowatts. So the work in this case to develop the head, the rate of work to develop the head is going to be equal to the density times the volumetric flow rate times the gravity times the head of the pump. We were given the density in the question, we were given the volumetric flow rate in the question and we know gravity is 9.81 meters per second. We also found the head that is developed by the pump. So now it's only a matter of substituting the values into this equation and we're able to solve that the head that is required or the, 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 let, the work that's required to generate the head is 1.51 kilowatts. Next, we want to actually look to see what is the shaft work. How can we find the shaft work? Well, the shaft work is given by the rate of work of the motor is the, equal to the rate of work required in developing the head divided by the efficiency of the pump. So when we substitute in the result we got previously and the efficiency of the motor, we're able to determine that the work required by the motor is 2.013 kilowatts. Finally, we can calculate the shaft work that is required by, and that's gonna be given as the rate of work in the motor divided by the efficiency of the, the motor. And that'll give us the electric work, right? So the electric work, therefore, is going to be the 2.13 kilowatts divided by the 85% or the 0.85. And we're able to determine, therefore, that the power that's required to satisfy this system is 2.4 kilowatts, approximately. I think most of you will agree that it's relatively straightforward to solve these problems. These problems are very much made up of your understanding of the equations and how to manipulate those equations and how to adapt them as is required. Once you're able to manipulate and adapt them, you're able to substitute the values in and solve for the various different elements. Right? It is vital that you're able to manipulate these equations. Understanding them and their importance is so essential to solving these problems. In the next exercise, we're gonna look at another problem it's question 33 that we have in our question sheet. And again, it's taken from the same textbook.